systems to be on the edge of control. I like the speed. Welcome back to Wilton Mill for this, our second programme from round one of the 2021 Ultimate Karting Championship. We'll be bringing you highlights from each of the remaining four finals with the IAMI classes featuring heavily. Junior X30 has proved to be one of the most popular classes for youngsters over the last few years. And earlier on, I caught up with one young man who's hoping to do well this weekend. My name is Zaki Hussain. I'm in Junior X30 and my number is 13. So Zaki, here we are then with crop promotions. I understand it was the fact that you've been watching Caden McQueen a couple of years ago that made you think, I'd like to be part of that team. Yeah, we, uh, we came from a test session in which we were testing a chassis out to see which one we could buy. And uh, Caden was here, so then we went to speak to Caden and he told Dan and we organised a test session with uh, Croc. And then we found out the Croc chassis was the best chassis for us, so then we just stuck to that. So tell me what it's like, here you are in the tent with all these other kart racers and the man that you were looking up to two or three years ago is now your teammate. His kart's at the back there. You know, how good is it to be in this position now? Yeah, it feels good that your idols are like, helping you and then they can see you and uh, they see you coming up. I understand uh, Croc are really helping you with your data because you've got a lot of technology on board the cart that helps you understand what you're doing around the circuit. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Yes, yeah, so you plug a little data thing into the back of the UniPro and then uh, they take it to the truck which is behind the awning and they plug it in. They can see where you go faster, slower, if you need to brake later or earlier. So Junior X30s that you're racing in now, you're much happier racing in this cart. This is a good cart for you. Yeah, I like the chassis, suit to me. When we tested it, it was good, so it was the best chassis we drove. So just thinking about how you're going to go this weekend and how well you're going to do, what are some of the things that you're going to be focusing on personally when you get in the car to make sure you get the best position possible? Well, I'm going to try to get good starts and not get taken out obviously into the first corner, second corner, um, make moves quite quick and snappy so then people behind can't catch up and overtake you yeah. and yeah just try to get a good position in the final for the final and you're in the tent here with your mum and dad they're you know proudly watching on but just how important is it to not only have the support of your mum and dad but the support of a team like crop promotions yeah it's quite good because then uh, when uh, you have a bad moment they can all come help you support you and uh, yeah it's good to be in a team so come Sunday night, at the end of the weekend, what are you hoping for? What would be a good weekend for you? Uh, maybe top five will be good for All us. Right. Well, best of luck for that top five. Thanks, Zaki. Thank you. Junior X30 up next here at Wilton Mill. Here's the grid. Lorenzo Cordell and Jessica Edgar from Sam Shaw and Connor Duncan. Then Gabriel Stilp and Jude Fernaho. Then Cart, Singh, Baker and Harrison to round out the top ten. Row six will see Gregory alongside Robinson. Then Brown and Clark, Geraghty and Line, Doughty and Brennan. All the way down to the 24th of the grid, Archie Heron. We're going to have a very exciting field of drivers. Here we go. And up to the first corner. Already an exciting battle out in front as the drivers edge their way through the first couple of quarters. Up towards us now. It is the 22 that leads the charge. Lorenzo Cordell from Sam Shaw. Jessica Edgar has Gabriel still around the outside trying to get into third position as the hustle tries to make its way up towards Inkermans, the right-hand kink where drivers get together. Oh, Hussein's gone off. So too is Gohill. And that's the 28 going around as well. That is Ben Doughty. So they come off the corner and there's more. Oh, there's more trouble. That is Sidler spinning. Geraghty spun as well. And it looks like Brennan and Heron got involved in that. Kira Harris took avoiding action. Goodness me, carts all over the shop on this opening lap and it looks like it's drizzling a little bit in parts of the circuit they're on slick tires there comes the move from jessica edgar to get through on our cameraman sam shaw into second place that accounted for the early drama but as the rain continued to fall there was more coming we rejoin the action later in the race as it all unfolded
There's the move. Sam Shaw into the lead. He's got past Lorenzo Cordel. Third is Carr. Carr very nearly getting into the toe of Lorenzo Cordel's machine there as Sam Shaw for premium karting, the number two seed, now leads the race. But now he's the one with the disadvantage. He's the one who's got to approach the water first. Exactly what we said earlier. The man leading is the man that hits the corner first. And as the rain starts to come down, you never quite know from one lap to the next where the breaking point is. This is one of the toughest situations for a kart racer to be in because the circuit changes, the corners change, lap to lap. Here comes Brandon Carr, gets the move on the inside of Lorenzo Cordell. That puts him into second place now. So good move from Brandon Carr. Gabriel Stilp, what a comeback. He's now in fourth position. What a charge forward. Gabriel Stilp had an awful start to this race. He was well down the field. He was outside the top 10, I think, at the start, but he's, he's steadily making his way back. Oh, that's Werner Ho trying to get the move on Connor Duncan. Didn't quite work on this occasion. Edgar and Harrison are down in seventh and eighth positions. What a difference a few laps makes. That is absolutely incredible. They were out in front uh, earlier on in this race. They both managed to get past Gregory to get up into seventh and eighth places. Oh, big run wide from Connor Duncan. Look, they're just losing grip. There's no grip at all in the final bend. They're all sliding out wide. Yeah, you can see the rain coming down on that camera as well. It's a little bit... Uh more obvious on that camera the drivers will know it on their visors it will seem like it's pouring down even though it's maybe spitting drops of rain and, on and, the on and, the visor the speed they're going it will look like a monsoon and let's not forget they're all on slick tires and it's not like other forms of motorsport where you can come in and change to wets you can't you've just got to handle it on oh, a spin that's gregory gregory goes around so unfortunately for henry gregory he's now got to fight his way from the back up and over the 13, oh, goes straight off now. the road. That's Saki Hussein. And also off goes the 36. That's Thomas Wainwright. So they're all black off. There goes the leader, Sam Shaw. Straight off the road, straight across the toe of the boot, trying to rejoin in front of the leaders. Oh, my goodness. It's all kicking oh, off now. No. You can see the rain Hang on, on lads. Ends. Dear, oh, dear. Brandon Carr manages to pull on the circuit in front of Sam Shaw. Shaw comes back to it. Now, the officials, I would not want to be them because obviously they've got a judge. Yeah. How do you how do you call that? He, because he's, he's cut missed the, the corner. He's missed the corner. He's cut the corner. Normally, he would get a one lap penalty for that because he has not completed that previous lap yep. in full. He didn't go around the tarmac, went across the grass. Now, they may take a view on it with it with it raining. They may be lenient, but yep. we'll have to see after the race. I have seen situations where they look at the rules and go, yes, but circumstances do apply, so you never know. 37, Leo Robinson charging his way through the field. The uh, superstar working his way through. Now, look, Lorenzo Cordell is leading, and in second is Gabriel Stilp. Welcome back to the big show, Gabriel. That's incredible. He was well down the field at the start. He was Awful about 11th start. on the second lap. And now he is there in second place. Yeah, again, as I said before, the quality drivers will look at the conditions and think, right, this is an opportunity for me. Well, Aiden Line is going to be the fastest lap of the race for the rest of this race. There's no question about that because the lap times are just going to plummet. So Aiden Line, congratulations on the fastest lap. Uh, ben Doughty and Archie Heron, the retirements from the race. Kai Gohill trying to get himself back up the order after his earlier transgression. Edgar on the inside now of Leo Robinson to get up into fifth position. So Sam Shaw third in front of Brandon Carr. Look at how much of the pace they pulled away on the rest of the field. Edgar there in fifth, Robinson in sixth place. Up the inside comes Luke Sintler to seventh position now in front of Connor Duncan. Look how slow the pace of the field is now. Sintler was off earlier on, Jake. He was. He had spun he, he was, it. He was involved in that incident. Yep, he had spun it and gone around and onto the grass, and now he has fought his way back up into eighth position. Yeah, Give that Ash man a lollipop. From Ashby to Parker. He was pretty much out of the race, and there he is in seventh place. Incredible comeback. This is an amazing circuit that always throws up fantastic races, particularly in conditions like this. You can see Cordell and Stilp absolutely tippy-toeing now. Sam Shaw's figured out how to get round the toe of the boot now, but it's not easy in these conditions, especially as it keeps changing, and you can see the spots of rain on the 360-degree camera. Look at the power slide from Brandon Carr. They've just got no grip at all compared to what they had at the start of the race. And drivers still tippy-toey, trying to guess where the traction is. You can't just boot the throttle because there's so much wheel spin that comes off the car. You've just got to time it. And look at the difference in lines here. Look, still goes way out wide, then gets the acceleration off the corner to hold on to his position there from Sam Shaw. But Lorenzo Cordell out in front with a very different interpretation of the racing line. 
And you can see, look, the difference in dynamic between the drivers. One chooses to go one way, another chooses to go another, but it's how the driver feels. You can't get, there's, there's no right or wrong answer here. We're on the penultimate lap, Jake, by the way, the timer. We've not noticed it, but the timer's <laughs> counting down. We're going to get the last lap board next time into the booth for the penultimate time. He goes time. still for the lead alongside Cordell. They bang wheels and still gets their Cordell on the grass. Still runs it around the outside. Shaw gets past them both to take over the lead. Oh my goodness, the lead changes twice in about 18 feet. And now Stilp's done it again. He takes the lead back again into the last lap. Absolute drama going into the boot for the penultimate time. Incredible race this so far. Slick and it's tires. not over yet, Jake. Slick tyres, a little bit of rain, and Wilton Mill. This is a race from heaven. Sam Shaw tippy-toeing around behind Gabriel Stilp, hoping for another chance of the lead. Stilp is just keeping it nice and planted on this final lap. Can he hold on? Into Ashby. Not too much wheel spin. Keep it together. Stilp looks back. Shaw's a long way back, but that can disappear. That gap in a heartbeat. He's just trying to hang on. Look, the back of the car is stepping out sideways. He goes up on the grass. So does Sam Shaw. They've both gone. And now Cordell gets through in a second. Car gets through in a third. And that surely has the win nailed for Gabriel Stilp, despite going off on the final lap, two wheels on the grass, Stilp should just have it. He will never be more relieved to finish a race in his young career, but Gabriel Stilp is gonna get it. What a victory, two arms in the air. Incredible, Stilp went wide, Jake, and sure, didn't concentrate on the track in front. He concentrated on Stilp's car and followed him off yep. in sympathy. Sam Shaw absolutely gutted. So too the 38 across the line of Finlay Harrison. Missed opportunities all the way through the field. But Gabriel Stilp, what a drive. What a recovery and what a victory. Lorenzo Cordell second for Brandon Carr and Sam Shaw. Jess Edgar in fifth place from Leo Brown and Jude Fernahoe. Leo Robinson, Connor Duncan, and Luke Sintler. But Gabriel Stilp, take a bow. That is how you win in the toughest conditions. Well, a testing race for those X30 juniors there. As you can see, my wet weather rain jacket came on, but for the racers, well, they didn't have the opportunity to change from slicks to wets. But in the finish, Croc Promotions, Gabriel Stilp was the man who kept his eyes on the prize and did everything he could to keep it on track. And here's what he had to say when I caught up with him after the podium. We didn't have the greatest of starts, we went back a few places but then I kept my head cool and then made my way back up to the front and then went for the leads and just stayed like that for the last couple of laps. Yeah exactly and well done to you. Lorenzo looked like he had it in the bag for most of the race but you obviously were able to keep your concentration and you just managed to think I can do this. Yeah, I just went down his inside in the second to last lap and he tried to turn him but I kept it on the inside and then I just won from there. Question worth asking, is that the championship race of the season? It may well be come the end of the season. Lorenzo Cordell it is that leads the championship moving forward, second in the final, but enough to give him the championship lead from Gabriel Stilp. Jess Edgar in third. Sam Shaw, you may have seen his reaction as he went through the line. Extremely disappointed. Well, fantastic action there from those junior X30 drivers. Join us after the break when it's the turn of Mini X30. Welcome back to Wilton Mill in North Hants, where the next bout of action out on track is for the ever-growing Mini X30 class. So let's get straight into the action with your race commentators, Jake Sanson and Alan Taddei. Let's bring you some more great action from Mini X30. Macaulay Bishop in pole position from Jack Hobson, then Finn Leslie and Eden Spanswick, George Robinson and Taylor Orridge, from Cameron Pratt-Thompson and Thomas Cucurillo Yeomans. Mins and Moat are on the fifth row of the grid from Turnbull and Lloyd. And then it's Hill and Aidan Hassan from Gracie Mitchell and Jack Owen Drawbridge. All the way down to 25th position, plenty of talent and great racecraft. Let's see what happens here at Wilton Mill. Let's race down to the first corner. On board with Aidan Hassan, our 360 onboard cameraman. And he's battling already with the eight of Wesley Swain, who runs wide up the inside. Is that going to be a move from Aston Wiggins? Not just yet. Wiggins has to hang back. So Hassan manages to control the pace through the first couple of corners. Everybody clean through Christmas. A very sensible start, actually. Oh, one or two going off, though. I've got a feeling that's George Robinson on the Jack Dex machine. Now, that would be terrible because he started up in P5. We're on board with Aiden Hassan, chasing after the 66. That is Taylor Orridge. And he's got on the inside of Turnbull. Turnbull trying to get back in. Oh, we've got on the, on the inside of us. That's Lloyd. Oh, and we've got off. 
Cameron Brad Thompson goes through. Wesley Swain going through. Cunningham's going to try and line up on the inside. He can't get there. He squeezed. George Robinson gets onto the inside line. What a fabulous bit of banter on track as the drivers continue to work their way around this rather greasy circuit. But the sun is out. It is going to start getting drier, which means the circuit will just get faster. Here's Aiden Hassan in pursuit of Cameron Pratt Thompson. Up towards Christmas. Move on the inside. Lovely. That's textbook from Aiden Hassan. Oh, he's not the only one. George Robinson coming along for good measure. So he's through as well. Jack Hobson, the new fastest lap of the race, as he closes in on Bishop with Bishop's teammate Spanswick right in there in third position. Then we've got Finn Leslie, then Kukurilla Yeomans in fifth position, Tom Kukurilla Yeomans in B5, then Jack Mowat, Morgan Hill, Taylor Orridge, Freddie Lloyd, and Miles Turnbull. Good race action as Robinson tries to get himself back into contention. On the inside, he's going to lose out. Nice overtake from Cameron Pratt Thompson. He gets through then into the 33, into position. Tall ones did well to pick up Macaulay Bishop, Jake, as a privateer. It was a privateer, I remember up at Lark Hall when he won in the final turn, did about five up the inside of the final turn. There was a few shenanigans going on, and Macaulay Bishop took the win as a privateer against all of the big teams. That was a great performance, and Paul Munns can uh, count himself lucky to have picked up Macaulay Bishop because he is top quality, and Paul will know it. Yeah, if we did a top ten for the best privateers in British karting over the last few years, it would be hard not to place exactly. Macaulay Bishop in P1 because yeah. yeah, he's absolutely. been absolutely astonishing. He and James Lingard, what they have done as privateers in recent years has just been absolutely astonishing yeah. in a world where awnings are where it's at. Bishop, Hobson, Spanswick. Very close indeed between the leading three. Finn Leslie still trying to stay with them in fourth place. Thomas Cucurillo Yeomans, they're in P5. Then Jack Mowat, Taylor Orridge, Freddie Lloyd still doing brilliantly to hold off Morgan Hill and Wesley Swain. Very difficult to get back into the zone when you've been out for a couple of seasons. Freddie Lloyd still doing an incredible job. Hassan there in 11th, having got past George Robinson and Cameron Pratt Thompson. 14th for Miles Turnbull ahead of Jack Cunningham and Mason Rudman. Very exciting stuff here. So here is the battle of a second. Hobson versus Spanswick. Wesley Swain now the fastest driver on track in P9 in cart number eight. So Hobson trying to hang on to the leader, Macaulay Bishop. He does not want Bishop to get away. He could really use a little bit of assistance from Eden Spanswick. It's actually Jack Hobson who's now the fastest driver out on track. So Jack Hobson for the Jack Dex Racing Colours on his car, continuing to push his way forward. Second position. They come off the final turn. A big slide there from Jack Mowat as he tries to close up. On the drivers in front, I think he's trying to get one over on Finn Leslie, his teammate, as they come through. There's the 72, Jack Owen Drawbridge just trying to get himself back into contention. We've seen Reese Bennett and Gracie Mitchell have a bit of a difficult start to the race. What about this battle? Jack Mowat versus Freddie Lloyd. And Freddie Lloyd, of course, is using one of Alex's old helmets as he continues his journey through the world of karting. And he can't really find much better a tutor than Alex Lloyd. Yeah, it was an amazing comeback. It was, he's been two years out of the sport, loses a spot there down the inside to the eight. That's but Wesley he's been Swain. two, yeah, Wesley Swain. But uh, he's been two years out of the sport. He comes back, I think it was, uh, was it PF International recently, in a decent sized field and won the race. It's uh, an incredible comeback after two years away. Yeah, good to see that Freddie Lloyd hasn't lost any of his speed, guts, or determination. They continue to plough forward. Now, look, Bishop's going defensive. Hobson is crawling all over the back of him, trying to make a move through on the inside. Here comes Swain on the inside. No way! Jack Mowat shuts the door firmly, and Freddie Lloyd gets in around the outside. Jack Mowat will not be passed. I wonder why Macaulay Bishop is defending early. It may be he doesn't like the fact that he's got somebody behind him. He thinks he's quick and wants to back him up into the carts behind. Yeah, look, Jack Hobson's getting frustrated. What are you defending for now? We've yeah, still got six minutes to go. He's trying to bring his teammate into it, look. I, th I think he's trying to back him up into his teammate and get his teammate past him so that they can work together. Tactical, tactical playbook from McCauley Bishop. He does not want Jack Hobson to be the man in second. He wants Eden Spanswick to be in P2. And the only way to make that happen is to force the issue. He again running backs wide. Hobson. Hobson keeps yeah, it right round the outside yeah. and is not quite able to hold it. And that's opened the floodgates. Bishop hangs on to the lead. Now Spanswick now wants. launches on the inside. That's what Bishop wanted. That's what he wanted. And look at that. You've got the man behind him. Hobson's all over him putting him under extreme pressure and now all of a sudden Hobson is not in the equation he's gone from second down to fifth place
That's huge for Bishop. I think Bishop knew what he was doing. He wanted to bring his teammate into play, and he's done exactly that. Well, now we've got the two teammates in the Mad Croc awning. You've got Finn Leslie and Thomas Cagarillo Yeomans. They can run together in third and fourth, and they can try and spoil the party for the Paul Munn twins. So this could be a fascinating duel, but Jack Hobson will be absolutely fuming. He will, Jake, but he's experienced. He's a top quality driver, Jack Hobson. He's just got to get himself onto the back of this group in front now. He's got to start working the positions. Listen, has the wing gone with four minutes 30 to go where he is? I think it probably has, but he's got to not allow himself to, you know, lose the plot here. If third place is the best you can get from this position then get third don't allow the red mist to descend go up for a silly move and end up you know out of the points even in this final because don't forget you only score points in the final as we've seen earlier that's cost a few drivers in the earlier races yes indeed the ultimate karting championship all being well will be a long season and there'll be plenty of opportunities to bag some points so you've got to stay hungry and you've got to stay very patient. As uh, Lewis Hamilton has said in previous races, it is a marathon, not a sprint. You've got to think yeah. about championships. He did. He said that, Jake, but then... <laughs> and then went for it. <laughs> completely the opposite. Yeah, then went for it. Bless him. Well, these guys know it's a long season. You've got to get straight back onto the job. If you lose a position... Oh, that's Taylor Orridge. Taylor Orridge out of the race. He was in the top six. That's devastating for him. A little further into the race. Look how much closer Jack Hobson is now to Finn Leslie. He'll be wanting to make the move. Oh, he's done it already! Into Parker. Boom. Bang tidy. Thank you and good night. He's into third place. Now looking for a podium. He's going to try and catch up to the leading two. But Macaulay Bishop, having got himself into the leading with Spanswick on his tail, he's cool. Just look at him. Do you see him looking behind? No. No, you don't. He doesn't don't. care. And you know why? Because that's his teammate behind, and he knows he's not throwing it up the inside with a lap to go. They're going to take a one-two for the team. That is an absolutely incredible master plan for Macaulay Bishop. He knows that Spanswick is there in second place, but he's not close enough to take the gamble. And that's how Bishop has engineered this race to go his way. Hobson doing everything he can to close up on these two in the hope that, well, maybe there might be a sprinkling of rain, maybe something might happen in the last few quarters, but it's not going to go his way today. He will still take decent points. Indeed, he will. He will know that uh, 28 points are on offer for third place. And in fact, that will give him second place in the championship overall behind Macaulay Bishop as the championship leader. He'll end up 10 behind out of the final turn. But what a brilliant victory and a brilliant second place for the Paul Mann team. It's a win for Macaulay Bishop, second for Eden Spanswick. Job done, masterclass, excellent strategy and a great form book for these two up front. They could well be the Hamilton and Bottas of Mini X30 in 2021 if they keep this up. Excellent stuff from Macaulay Bishop in front of Eden Spanswick. Jack Hobson in third from Finn Leslie, Thomas Cucurillo Yeomans and Wesley Swain. Then Cameron Pratt Thompson, Freddie Lloyd doing well on his comeback. Jack Mowat in ninth and Aidan Hassan recovers to 10th position. But can anyone beat the PMR twins in 2021? Your guess is as good as mine. So there you go, that was the Mini X30s. In third place, we finished up with Jack Hobson. Huge congratulations to him. But just ahead of him, teammates Eden Spanswick was in second place, just behind the man that started on pole, Macaulay Bishop. Well done to Macaulay. Started on pole, put himself out in front and stayed there. But oh boy, did he have to work for it. It was all going on behind him, wasn't it? Let's find out then what he had to say when I caught up with him at the podium. Eden Spanswick chasing you down. Were you aware of just how close he was throughout that one? Yeah, it was it was quite close. Like I knew he wasn't going to go in because we um, tried to get the best possible result for everyone. So it was quite sensible by, by him as well. Yeah, fantastic, great teamwork. Really looking forward to Cumbria now. Then all eyes on that one from you. Yeah, I was really good there in the cadet, so hopefully I can carry that on. Fantastic. Anyone you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Pack, Packmate Storage and Beats Boys Club. You just did it. Well done, sir. See you in Cumbria. Thank you. Maximum points for Macaulay Bishop. 66 points is good enough for a 10-point lead over Jack Hobson. Eden Spanswick there in third from Finn Leslie, Thomas Cucurillo, Yeomans. Then comes uh, Pratt Thompson, Robinson, Mowat, Freddie Lloyd inside the top 10 in ninth place with Sebastian Mins rounding out the top 10. Well, we go from some of our youngest racers in the Mini X30s, stepping up to our most senior drivers in the Senior X30s right after this.
Welcome back to Wilton Mill, where our penultimate final out on track are the Senior X30s. Now, these experienced drivers always offer up some great racing. And excitingly, this weekend, Lando Norris's social media brand, Team Quadrant, are here. And so I caught up with their driver earlier on, Steve Brown. I'm Steve Brown. I'm racing in Senior X30, Dan Holland Racing. Steve, great to see you here this weekend. Tell us about your journey, how it's come to be that you're with UKC and a little bit more about Quadrant, the team that's on your cart there. Sure, yeah, it's been, uh, been a long old road from maybe 15 years ago. I was racing in Mini Max, Junior Max. Then I did a lot of years in higher karting. And then now with Quadrant, we've decided to jump back into the, the deep end here at the UKC in uh, Senior X30. And just tell us uh, exactly what Quadrant is all about. It's a collective and it's all to do with YouTube. Yes, there's a collective of, uh, there's five of us, Landon Norris, plus four others. We uh, create our own YouTube content on our own channel, sell merchandise. So it's just a, a big brand that encapsulates racing and apparel and, and, our, love for, uh, and our love for racing. And we, we made a video with Lando and myself uh, a couple of months ago. We raced against each other around here. And uh, that video really took off and off the back of that, they decided, okay, we're going we're gonna to sponsor you for a year in UKC and see how you get on. And so far, so good. We've only had a couple of rounds of practice here this morning at Wilton Mill, but how are you finding it? I still have a tendency to steer a bit too harsh into the corners, uh, which is what I'm used to from higher karting. So it's really a case of just dialing that out. And I'm not too far away from being solidly, at least in the midfield, and having a good fight. Um, it was actually Lando looking at your own YouTube videos before you joined Quadrant. So you yourself were you know, an established YouTube, YouTube kart racing star before Quadrant came along. Yeah, sure. So um, I was doing a lot of higher kart series called Club 100 before this and making videos on that. And that series did really well. And I think uh, Lando and his management were looking you know, for people to join Quadrant. They enjoyed the fact that I was doing the karting, but also the sim racing. So an element of real and, and sim. And, um, you know, they contacted me uh, last summer to get involved and be part of it. And, you know, it's gone from strength to strength so far. And, you know, here we are now. Uh, they're sponsoring me to do a whole season of UKC, which is amazing. I didn't think I'd step back into owner driver karting, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible, the opportunities they've, they've given me so far. Yeah, it really is. Sort of brings a broader question as well for youngsters coming through, the power of social media, the power of YouTube to, you know, you found yourself in a great position with Lando Norris, but every driver here from a young age needs to, you know, start nailing the YouTube, nailing the Instagram, because you need that sponsorship. Absolutely. I mean, I was looking, um, even in like football transfers, they consider the value of um, how much social media following the, the, the players have, and it's probably the same in Formula One. Um, so, yeah, if you can get behind the social media, uh, get that working really well, that can massively count in your favour, you know, drawing in sponsors. Uh, because of the amount of views I can get, you know, Quadrant are quite happy to get the, you know, the livery on the car. It just, it gets their name in front of more eyes. Yeah. So, yeah, if you can get the social media right, it's a really good way to, to, to draw in some sponsors. Yeah. Well, best of luck. Thanks ever so much for talking Thank to you. us. Cheers. Senior X30 here at Wilton Mill. It's Oliver Greenall and Caden McQueen on the front row from Kalai Atkins and Piers Pryor. Lewis Mackey and Luke Watts, Derek Morgan and Lucas Ellingham, and then Harry and Josh Torpy rounding out the top 10. Alex Moody and Teddy Pritchard-Williams from Johnston Cool and Scusa, then Henwood and Grant. And keep an eye out for Charlotte Parker and JP Sleater from the back row of the grid. They'll be wanting to storm forward. So ready and Let's race the Welter Mill. Brilliant start from the front row of the grid. Caden McQueen chopped the cross. Nice and early doors as they battle through the first couple of corners. Lucas Ellingham trying to hold it on the outside, not without losing too much time. And that is backwards through the field. The Jamaican, Kalai Atkins, losing grip. Watts on the inside. We're on the outside. Hang on to it. Hang on. He tries to go for a move on Dale Boy. Oh, dear. Derek Morgan didn't give him any room at all. And there is the 80. Just in behind now, that is Jordan Brown. So the field continues to battle through on this opening lap. Everybody just getting a little bit skittish on the first lap or two. And we're still battling. There goes Brown on the inside. That'll do. We're straight back on the inside, though. Excellent recovery. And Watts finds a gap on the inside line as well. That'll do nicely. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Still got a few drivers to overtake before we catch up to the race leader, Oliver Greenall. There's Piers Pryor, distinguishable in second place with the pink lid. Only real men wear pink, as we know, Alan. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We keep saying that, Jake, but then we will oh, keep saying it. What's on the inside? Brown on the inside as Ellingham gets out wide. 
Are we going to lose another place to our right? Down to the breaking zone for Christmas. We've got to hang on, hang on. Around the outside. Oh my goodness, we've made up places. Never mind, lose places. Jordan Brown gets boxed in, and that's Moody nearly getting hung out to dry. So we make the bid on the inside. We're through. Alex Moody trying to hang on so that Jordan Brown doesn't get the move. And that's well recovered. Big lunge up the inside there from Josh Torpy on the Litchfield cart. But he's still fighting. Oh, we've gone off. That's Kalai Atkins tangling there with Teddy Pritchard Williams. So Atkins off on the grass, unfortunate. Let's look at this again. This is a stereotypical example of two or three drivers going for the same bit of racetrack. And he's actually assisted there, the 55 Teddy Pritchard Williams, by a very racy Casper Scusa, who was trying to get his way into that little gap as well. And it's poor Kali Atkins who gets spat out onto the grass. And he's now got to recover, making up places all the way through. Getting spicy in the midfield, Steve Brown, the 90, Super GT himself in front of Alex Johnston. Then you've got Parker, Grant and Coombs in pursuit. Johnston making his bid on the inside of Steve Brown, up on the curbs, he's through. Brown running wide, that's going to cost him, it costs him at least three places. Parker tries to take on Johnston, he can't make that stick. Coombs now coming on the inside and then we've got Teddy Pritchard-Williams up in front of them all. Trying to hold on to 10th position as he jukes it out there with the 173 of Harry Torpy. And it's every man for himself. Richard Williams trying to come around the outside of Josh Torpy. Diving on the inside. Alex Johnston makes the gap come alive. The 17 in there as well. That's Oliver Henwood. So there's everywhere you look. Great overtaking moves as Piers Pryor gets the move on Del Boy for third. What a race. What a race. Alex Johnston put himself uh, in position in the toe of the boot to do himself a brace coming out and did so. Yeah, it's an epic midfield battle. And then we've just seen Pryor on Morgan. This man's got absolutely no problems at all, has he? Oliver Creenall just disappearing out in front of the rest of the field. And there is Caden McQueen in second place. Just look at that gap. Greenall and McQueen have absolutely checked out to the rest of the field. This is unheard of in X30, particularly in the senior field when it's all ridiculously close quarters between them all. But out in front, it is Greenall from McQueen. Here comes the move again from Derek Morgan. He gets through on the inside of Piers Pryor. Clean pass into third position. If I know Piers Pryor, he's not done yet, though. Is he going to make the move into Ashby? Yes, he does. An immediate retaliation, but he drifts wide. And Derek Morgan gets him back into third position. A little too hasty, matey boy. So Derek Morgan holds third position then in front of Piers Pryor. And now Pryor is in the clutches of Lewis Mackey. That's not where he wanted to be at all. Mackey is one of the toughest competitors in this field. And if he even senses there's a whiff of a gap, he's going to put his card on the inside line and snatch the place away. Where's the move? Where's the move? It's going to come at Christmas, no doubt. Quick through, quick through Oblivion. And Lewis Mackey's going to hunt down Piers Pryor. Here comes the move onto the inside line. Textbook, nailed it. Absolutely perfect from Lewis Mackey. There's not a lot that Piers Pryor can do in retaliation. Will he make another charge back, though, into Ashby? He's not close enough this time. Hasn't quite been able to get the run off the turn to be able to make the retaliatory move. So now Luke Watts is there in sixth position, looking for his own charge to get into the top five. Piers Pryor, with the luxury of knowing this circuit like the back of his hand, of course, he really does know his way around this place. It's his local track, but then that's probably one of the reasons why Caden McQueen is so far out front. This is watch. practically McQueen's back garden. Goes watch, oh! runs, runs Pryor wide in the final turn. Pryor was lucky not to hit the barriers there, to be fair. That is as close as you can get to running the gauntlet without scraping the barrier. And Watts gets through. Pryor coming straight back at him. Watts charging across. That was absolutely brutal from Luke Watts. And Pryor gestures. What are you playing he at? <laughs> What's he doing? Well, he's trying to hold on to the place is what he's doing. Well, it, it, it's interesting because I think a few... As, uh, every, oh! No, Elegant edges Pryor onto the grass. Does Sam Pryor have a bullseye on his back or what? And then he loses another place. Brown's going through. Scoos is going through. Dear, oh dear, a major headache for Piers Pryor. Last lap, Oliver Greenall out in front. Stretched well clear from Caden McQueen. This midfield battle still raging in the closing stages. It's one of those rare occasions when the midfield battle has sort of upstaged the drivers out in front, really. But Oliver Greenall will not mind at all. Points to the team. Thank you, boys. Victory. Dominantly so. Caden McQueen second place. And Lewis Mackey joins his teammate on the podium after an epic run. Gets past Derek Morgan. That'll do. Third position is mine, mate. Excellent racing. And a good run from the drivers in Senior X30. They really have delivered once again here at Wilton Mill.
all these names doing an exceptional job. Oliver Greenall with the win from Gaden McQueen and Lewis Mackey. Luke Watts in fourth place and Lucas Ellingham in fifth after a penalty for Derek Morgan. He slips to sixth in front of Piers Pryor. Then Jordan Brown, Teddy Pritchard-Williams and Joshua Torby. So many more drivers could have been in the top ten in that one. That's how good the racing is in X30. Well, how about that? Those X30 seniors, they're really letting their experience and speed show. And in the end, there was really only one man who was doing the business, and that was Oliver Greenall, wringing the neck of that Synergy chassis there for Fusion Motorsport. A dominant victory for him. Let's find out what he had to say when I caught up with him afterwards. I just managed to get a gap at the start. I sort of adapted to the conditions a bit better and uh, got my gap and then was fast enough just to keep it. So it's been a really strong weekend, um, my first weekend in UKC. Um, so I'm, yeah, overall happy with the weekend, how it went, so yeah. You might be forgiven for thinking that uh, this is not a competitive class after seeing Greenall romp away with victory there from Caden McQueen, who's well clear from Lewis Mackey in third. But I can assure you, you would be wrong. If this was a book, there would be chapters still to be written and drama to unfold. Join us in part four for the Army Cadet final where Freddie Lloyd tries to channel his brother Alex's world championship winning mojo by wearing his helmet. As Freddie Krueger might say, are you ready for Freddie? Welcome back to Wilton Mill. If you follow cadet karting in the UK, you'll know this next man. Dan Hazelwood, team manager, Fusion Motorsport. Dan, great to see you here this weekend. Excitement under the Fusion tent as we start another UK season. How's everything going so far this weekend? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going really well. We've been blessed with some good weather to start the season off. A um, little bit of rain yesterday, but today's nice and sunny. Track's in really good condition. Lots of grip. Um, so the drivers, hard work for the drivers, of course, um, but uh, they're all doing pretty well, so yeah. And you've got a full complement of young drivers here. I think 12 or more in the cadet class, and some of them really new to the sport. Yeah, we've even got a couple of novices in the awning, which is great to see, like the youngsters coming up through. Um, some drivers that uh, didn't do the championship last year that are, they're having a go this year. So, yeah, we've got a full awning um, and, uh, yeah, a, a good spread of drivers from the beginners to the more experienced as well. And excitingly, this year at UKC, the IAMI Cadet class fits nicely with the other IAMI Cadet races that happen throughout the season. So there's a great opportunity for mums and dads to get involved in UKC and still race in other championships. The thing with the condensed calendar we've got this year because of the late start to the, to the season because of COVID, um, we've ended up in a position where it's easier logistically and for the drivers to, to be racing the same category throughout the year. So it was a good decision, I think, for UKC to adopt the, the, the normal cadet class that we race and I think it's really boosted the grids you know we've seen uh, 30 drivers I think on the grid for the cadet class so that's really encouraging and hopefully we can continue that throughout the year. And uh, coming under an awning like this with yourselves at Fusion it's a great opportunity for mums and dads who perhaps don't know a whole lot about cars themselves and youngsters to learn from your mechanics and your guys who have been there and done it. Yeah exactly I mean we've got a good team of experienced mechanics who majority of them have raced before at various different levels uh, so they can um, impart some wisdom on the drivers as well um, so more than just bolting the carts together you know they, they give them a bit of advice on the on the grid and when they come in after the races as well um, so so yeah that's really helpful and yeah a lot of experience within the team so good good uh, grounding for the for the drivers and a good backdrop for them to learn yeah, and just talking about perhaps your own sort of journey through motorsport and being the overall boss of Team Fusion, how much enjoyment and pride do you take from the setup you've got here? And when you look at some of the smiles on the kids' faces when they're running back in through scrutineering after a race and they've had a great time, it must make you really proud. Yeah, I think it's always nice to see a smile on their faces when they've done well, but also if they've not done well to try and sort of give them a little bit of a confidence boost and, and that's what it's all about, to keep them sort of enjoying the sport that they're doing. And, yeah, we've got to take it seriously. It's a very competitive sport, but at the same time, they've got to be enjoying what they do because for, for most of them, it's, uh, it, is a, it is a hobby at the moment. Um, could be the start of a career, but uh, yeah, it's very serious, but they've also got to enjoy it as well. So for me, yeah, uh, um, a great sense of pride um, with the level that we've got to as a team. Um, enjoyed a lot of success. Um, it's always hard when you're at the top to try and maintain that, but uh, that's what we're here for and that's what we're going to try and do. Who are some of the names under the marquee here that we should be uh, keeping our eyes on this weekend? I know you've got a lot of races and they're probably all going to do well, but is there one or two that we're expecting great things from? Well, the highest seeded drivers from last year, we've got William Murtagh and Noah Wolfe, 
uh, we both did the championship and did well yeah. last year. We've also got Zach Drummond, who's the highest seeded uh, national driver. So he's doing UKC for the first time. So he's going to be one to watch. Uh, George Edgar, who won the first round of the British Champs last weekend. So he's going to be at the front. Um, yeah, there's a handful of drivers, really, that we've got that should be battling to win the race. Dan, thanks ever so much for talking to us and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Miami Cadet is never boring, especially here at Wilton Mills. Zach Drummond and Noah Wolf on the front row from Lewis Werrell and Kit Polovsky, then Green and Sofronea, Moore and Ashcroft, Jensen Graham and Will Murter in the top 10. Harrison Mackey and Riley Cranham from George Edgar and Aston Sharp. Then Parker, Lovett, Kamyab and Phillips. Anthony Witkowski and Kanish Rao are going to be in the mix there in the middle of the battle. Keep an eye on Freddie Housley and Ben Smith as they will charge their way through from the back row. Well, the race initially got started, but Will Murter suffered this big incident and hit the final corner barrier. And as a result, the red flags came out. It means that the restart will take place without Will Murter. And of course, it will go underway under single file. But look at the energy that's taken on by the cart as it slaps the barrier. Bang! Will Murter, a very lucky young man, but he is out of the first round of UKC 2021. So here we go for the restart, and away we go. Zach Drummond in front of Noah Wolf, Lewis Farrell right in there in third position for Oliver Rowland Motorsport as we charge out of the first couple of corners and up towards Manuel's bank. Christmas is next. Drummond is about to lose out to his teammate, Noah Wolf, who decides to go for it. So does Werrell. Get up his left open, and Drummond is going to get squeezed here. Down to third, down to fifth, potentially, for Zach Drummond. Yes, he's on the outside line, and that is no man's land as far as the driver is concerned up at the front. There goes the 17, George Edgar through. We're on board with Ashcroft, and there goes Drummond even further back down the field. Oh, dear. Poor Zach Drummond from first to worst. Goodness me, that is not the way he wanted his first lap to go. Two on-board cameras in this one with Jacob Ashcroft and Lewis Werrell should bring us plenty of action because this is one class where there is always action, Jake. Absolutely. It's guaranteed pretty much in Miami Cadet. You're always going to have a few banters and few battles. Here's Ashcroft on the inside of the 53. Gets the move done nicely there on Zach Green. And there's the 44, Dan Sofronea coming through. So Sofronea gets the exit off of the final corner and he will make up the place as well, the Oliver Rowland Motorsport driver. So they continue to battle into the breaking zone for Christmas. Oh, and that's a move for P5. So that is Edgar on Graham. On board with Werrell, right in behind the race leader Noah Wolf. Now, again, Lewis Werrell is one of the smarter drivers in the field here. He's going to play the long game with Noah Wolf. He'll want to get clear, but Morgan Moore's going to throw water on that plan. Moore gets through into second position, straight back on the inside. Comes Werrell, gets back into second position, but they've lost ground to Noah Wolf now, so they need to join forces and get back on terms with the double duty maestro Noah Wolf up in front. I can't tell you how tough it is these days for these youngsters to do both Honda Cadet and Miami Cadet in the same weekend. It is so tough to do it because obviously you're trying to dial in for one particular car, but you drive a Honda Cadet completely differently to the way you drive an Miami Cadet. So it's so tough on these youngsters to try and change carts mid-weekend. Ashcroft gets the fastest lap in, but that's a test of the character for Noah Wolf. Not only is he doing both classes, but he's at the front in both of them. Yeah, exactly. Quality is quality. Doesn't matter what you race. If you're a racing driver, you can race anything. That's what Jim Clark used to do. There's Phillips trying to get through on the inside line there of the 71 of Anthony Witkowski. Jesse Phillips, who's come straight into this 2021 campaign. He's still one of the youngest out there, don't forget. He's only nine, is Jesse Phillips. And he's been battling for race victories in Europe. Oh, not a lot of space to negotiate there. Goodness me. That's Zach Drummond trying to get back on terms with Jacob Ashcroft. He thinks about it on the inside, then bails out, gets back on the throttle fractionally early and gets through. That was a good recovery there from Zach Drummond. And he's on the charge to get himself back into the front of the field. He's up to eighth place now, having got past Ashcroft. So Drummond working his magic. Wolf in the lead. Werrell and Moore right in behind. Watch out for Harrison Mackey. That's Lewis's younger brother, don't forget. So they're battling away. Oh, side by side. Moore trying to hang on to this. Werrell dives through to hold on to third position in front of Harrison Mackey. But Harrison Mackey is right there for the attack as well. This is going to get frenetic in 2021 in Ayama Cadet. Can Noah Wolf hang on? And let's not forget that Will Mertz is still going to be a factor in 2021. He'll be back at round two. We continue on in the closing stages, and you've got Kit Bolovsky, George Edgar, Zach Drummond, Jacob Ashcroft, Harrison Mackey, Roman Kamyab, Zach Green. They're all in the mix. Very exciting stuff. On board with Ashcroft. That's Green going through. We're getting back on terms with Harrison Mackey. For some reason, George Edgar isn't transponding, but he's up there in the top five. So he's in fifth position now behind Zach Drummond. Here are the three leaders. 
Noah Wolf, Lewis Werrell and Morgan Moore dueling away for position out of Christmas towards Inkermans. Werrell is right in there behind Noah Wolf. We're on board with him once again. Morgan Moore going left to go the long way round at Ashby. That's not going to work. So he has to have another go at it. Down to the breaking zone for Parker. To the inside line. Now he's going to get his chance on the inside of Werrell. Wolf is going ultra defensive. Moore into second. Werrell down to third. Drummond and Edgar are closing in all the time. They've got to be careful into the boot. This is where it's all going to get settled. The long way round the outside comes Morgan Moore to the inside of Wolf. Wolf drifts wide on the grass. Drummond and Edgar on the inside. They've got them. Drummond and Edgar are through into first and second. They're going to take it all. Werrell's going to be third just at the line. Zach Drummond and George Edgar have snatched it all away. What a finish. Noah Wolf, Jake, has gone into the boot here in first place. He's come out in seventh. He has indeed. Now watch Drummond, look. He just waits. He bides his time, lets them drift wide, lets them go three wide. Wolf gets on the grass and Drummond, he bides his time, picks his moment, floors the throttle, gets through them all. George Edgar pops through on the inside, they're in second as well. Thank you very much, boys. Wolf goes wide, Moore goes wide, and that's what gives Lewis Werrell that third position. Amazing finish. Drummond, Edgar and Werrell from Morgan Moore, and Roman Kamyab picks up fifth in the end from Kit Polovsky, and Noah Wolf, who slips to seventh in front of Zach Green and Dan Sopranea, with Will Murta back in the action in round two. This 2021 season is going to be biblical exciting well how about that that is why cadet kart racing is just so exciting after the restart noah wolf put himself out in front and was battling to stay there for most of the race looked like he had it in the bag then it all went off didn't it in the last couple of corners too many changes position to mention but in the finish zach drummond Fusion Motorsport, cart number 35, found himself out in front and he was wagging his finger at the finish line. Let's find out what Zach had to say when I caught up with him afterwards. Well, Zach, how about that cadet race? Cadet racing really is eventful. We had a red flag, we had a restart and you started on pole. And then in the finish, it all came down to the last corner and you took the win. You must be absolutely thrilled. Yeah, um, speechless. I went down to 13th on the restart. It wasn't the best start. Um, and then I just tried my hardest to get back through and then I went fourth into the boot and then I got lucky and got round for the win. Well, well played you, sir. Like you say, down to 13th after the restart. At that point, did you think your day was all over and your race was run or what were you thinking? Never give up. Never give up indeed. Zach Drummond goes into that final turn down in around fifth place, comes out in first. A win in the pre-final earlier as well has given him a maximum scoop of 66 points from Lewis Werrell and Noah Wolf. George Edgar's second place moves him up to sixth place in the championship. What a barn burner that was. Well, that's it. Round one of the 2021 Ultimate Karting Championship is over. We're off to Rowra in Cumbria for round two to what many believe is one of the most picturesque kart racing circuits anywhere in the UK. And it's certainly a track where overtaking an action is almost guaranteed. Until then, though, from all of us here at Wilton Mill, see ya.